What's up YouTube? I am Promise Keeper, a sprinkler systems designer. If you've not seen the other videos, I'm going to try to pull those down just to keep this all in one. Um, I've thrown some videos up recently about NICET certification. And uh, with this video, the good news is I have passed my level three advanced hydraulics and water-based systems layout. I did have to take it twice. Um, the cool thing about having to take it a second time is now I can tell you that the first exam and the second exam were completely different. What you're probably interested in is the prep. And I will say the same thing I said in the other videos, FireTech, use their online course. The little bit of money you're going to invest in that is well worth what you're gonna do with your career. My level three general plans, I passed on my first attempt. The quiz, the, the actual NICET quiz, was exactly like the simulated exams and the content that the general plans prep course covered. The advanced hydraulics. My first NICET test attempt, I scored a 489 and I needed a 500 to pass. The whole exam, I knew things weren't going well. What was strange about the level three advanced hydraulics, the exam questions on the one that I failed were very different from the simulated exam questions in FireTech's course. Um, when I failed, I reached out to them and part of their policy is that if you don't pass it, they give you a course extension. I needed that badly. Um, it took me so much time to go through that course because I had psyched myself out. There was content in the exam that I forgot they even covered in their course. So it falls back on me, not on them. The, the two NICET quizzes that I took for the advanced hydraulics, my first test was very difficult for a number of reasons. I got the batch of questions where they really wanted to confuse you. They just were not written the way a human being speaks. <laughs> when I thought about how easily I passed the level three general plans, and then I looked at the way these questions were formatted, it was kind of upsetting it was so different. When I went to take the advanced hydraulics the second time, completely different. It was like one individual wrote the first test and another wrote the second. The questions made sense and the questions that I struggled with on the first test, a lot of those I didn't see on the second attempt. A little bit of luck, but a whole lot of prep because with that course extension, I knew I had one more chance to do this. I did not want to take it a second time. And I'm going to tell you that I am, I am a Christian. I spent some time praying about this situation. It was my own fault that I failed on a couple of very simple questions. If I had passed, it would not have been with integrity. The second attempt, the advanced hydraulics, I walked out of that test and knew it was done. For you looking to prep, if you don't have people around like I didn't have people around who had taken the new test format recently, you need to invest in FireTech's material. I don't work for them. They're not paying me anything for this, but I've gotten a lot more response than I expected from these videos. Um, people from all over the country running into different situations, people who are interested in becoming a designer, but they don't understand how that process works people who want to take NICET without realizing the requirements that are set in place before you can test, go to NICET.org and it is all spelled out. But the long and short of it is you cannot become NICET certified if you are not already in the business under another designer. Um, I don't know a way around it. You have to satisfy experience requirements. Level one and level two they really don't amount to anything except showing that you want to move up in the career. There is, there's really no money if I hold up a credential that says, hey, I'm a level two. It says I should know what I'm doing, but I've got nothing in my signature that's of value yet. With level three, now things are starting to change. But it's been four weeks. I have checked NICE's website every day multiple times and it's been a long four weeks i'm waiting for them to finalize the uh, verification results and give me that certificate it says they have 90 days they may take the full 90 days before they issue that thing it's driving me nuts 
So, a couple of things. Um, go through FireTech, and FireTech will tell you everything I'm about to say and more. You need to prepare the way they tell you to prepare. Highlight sections of the code that you're going through. Buy the fire tabs. Those were really helpful, especially the second time around. Don't use blue highlighter directly over text in your code. For me, it just killed the contrast. Uh, yellow, orange, and even the light purple highlighter worked really well. Um, I started using the blue when I realized how bad it screwed up my text to just make big lines down the side of my paper where I knew, okay, I have to focus here. I have a different folder for each one of my code books. You're gonna to need to take every question just as serious in the study guide as you will when you're taking the real exam. I took every test multiple times. Several of them, I took the five test limit. I wanted to know I was good with this. The idea is that these build on each other. So if you are brand new to this going into level one, you need to do these quick. You need to take your level one test and after you've used that level one study material, you need to start studying for level two. There's going to be things in level three that they expect you to already know from level one and two. I took my level one and two under the work elements a long time ago. What they think I know may not be what I know. It may seem like a lot of money at first, but I've been where you are, I guarantee it. I never thought that I would be sitting in this exact office when years ago, the chief engineer said, one day it's gonna be you. <laughs> I did not believe that for a second, and yet here I am. If you go through this as thoroughly as you should, and it's hard to understand till you take a test, you don't get the answers from FireTech, but you know how to get the answers. Work on these problems until you memorize these formulas, which is difficult. Believe me, I didn't think it would ever happen. I had a notebook and I worked through every problem in writing because you're gonna get your little dry erase board and a marker when you go into Pearson View to take your real test. You need to make some notes. One thing that's difficult in the Pearson View exam is using that on-screen calculator. It is very unresponsive. I had to be very intentional every number I hit. It was too easy to think I pressed a digit that I did not. But if you go online to Texas Instruments website, you can download an emulator for 90 days. That was invaluable. When I went through their course, I used that online calculator so that I knew exactly what I would be dealing with in the exam. I also spent the 15, 20 bucks and bought the real one. Useful to have, but not the same as being on screen. So if there is a specific question you have, this is the place to have those discussions. Leave comments. Anyone and everyone is going to comment below because somebody wants to know something and someone has the experience to answer the question. A couple of the tough things that were on my exam that were not in the fire tech material at all was a question regarding the mounting height of a device. And that's all the more specific I can get without getting myself into trouble with NICET. <laughs> Um, and then they gave me two calc problems where I had a, it was three heads on a branch line, but it was not the branch line that FireTech prepares you for. This was a branch line with a sprig and a drop and either another sprig or another drop. And they were all different lengths to figure out tank volume. Duration is not a difficult thing to figure out. Sizing pumps is going to be huge. My mistake with taking the general plans and then hydraulics was putting so much time in between them because general plans covered a lot on fire pumps. Don't put time in between it. It all goes together. I took the advice of someone who, and I should have listened to myself. That's, that's what this job becomes. Needing someone else's advice and direction to being able to run on your own. That's where you gotta get. Horsepower reduction for elevation and temperature that stuff's easy. If it's not easy, I'm sorry. K-factor for a valve. This was also in the FireTech course and I completely spaced. When I failed the first test and was so frustrated, 
I went back to study again and I found in my handwritten notes where I had in fact assigned a K factor to a valve and used that to determine friction loss based on different flows. Up until the study course, no one has ever presented that idea that you could give a K factor basically to anything. Um, the way they worded it was not that simple. Pay attention to their slides because it's in there. Focus more on the test at the end of their lesson modules and not the simulated exams because the three simulated exams for advanced hydraulics were like having the same questions over and over again in a different order. That should have been done differently for sure. The questions at the end of each lesson are probably going to do more for you than just focusing on the exam because when I passed it, I failed the real one. On my second attempt, I was so confident in my passing that when I got to question 52, I had 45 minutes left. I raised my hand and I went and took a restroom break. I was like, this test is over for me. I've got it. Don't know how often that happens, but when you have nearly an hour left in an exam that the first time I was so stressed over, that's a good thing. So thanks to FireTech. Um, really, I appreciate the ton of comments and stuff that I've gotten on these videos from other designers, people in the same scenarios. Um, leave, leave comments below for sure. I want to know what you guys do, where you're at, the kind of company you're in. We're a pretty small outfit. Um, I am one of two designers. Our current uh, rookie designer has not tested in anything yet. He's very new. Uh, our level four in the office who's been signing our drawings is now more of an office manager and a salesman. He, uh, you know, the goal is to get out of what we do because it can be a huge headache. We have 20 to 25 guys, I think, in the field. Um, half of that is service, half of it's contract, and they're all union. We are not in the office, don't make the same money, don't get the same benefits. But with that level three, I got an immediate raise from the vice president when I showed him that paper that said I passed the test. <laughs> that felt good. I'm, I'm very curious if you're still with me here. What are some scenarios in your design you've run into where you've had disagreements and not been able to get clear answers on? Um, one thing that happens a lot is water velocities. We do a lot of government work, um, military work, and they have that 20 feet per second um, max velocity, which is just insane. That's the difference between a four inch main and a six inch main. There's no getting around it. It was an FM standard. It's no longer an FM standard. Another thing we've run into that's been difficult is something called phantom flow. We've had an argument on what you are supposed to do regarding this particular section of code where you're directed to add the hose stream to the most remote branch line if there's no separation between a higher hazard and a lower hazard and you chose not to extend your area into the lesser hazard space. We have what amounts to an extra hazard space sprinkled with six heads. It is a very small room and it is in a two hour rated enclosure. That is a separate fire area. The engineering firm, despite me giving them an article that I will put in the description below, despite showing them that article and having this conversation on three separate occasions, they are insisting we calc past that area, which is beyond code, or we prove that room could flow 3,000 square feet worth of water. Basically, 30 heads in a room that has six. Curious if you've run into that, because I know we're not the only ones, but it's only been on this government job. So, let's have some conversations. Um, I'm sure there's some things that you want to know that I've missed. I wanted this to be brief. I've probably lost most of you already, but uh, let's, let's maintain some connections, keep this together, and help each other out. Thanks for watching.